Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we introduce Selton's chain store paradox and begin our discussion of credibility in dynamic games. We are now ready to analyze the play of a dynamic game of complete information and use that analysis to take our first look at credibility, the subject that will be the running theme throughout our study of dynamic games of complete information. Here is Selton's so-called chain store paradox. This game tells a story about how a small entrant can compete effectively against a larger incumbent, despite the theoretical ability of the latter to crush the former. We'll get to the paradox towards the end of this video. For now, we will concern ourselves with understanding the game and finding its Nash equilibria. We know how to study matrix games, so let's write this game down in matrix form and find its Nash equilibria just like we did in the first third of the course. We first need to use each player's actions to find her corresponding strategies. Each player has just one move, so actions and strategies neatly coincide. The entrant has two actions in its one action space, stay out and enter. Let's make the entrant our row player. The incumbent also has two actions in its one action space, coexist and fight. Let's make the incumbent our column player. Now we'll fill in these four boxes with the appropriate payoffs. Suppose the entrant plays stay out and the incumbent plays coexist. The induced path of play is that the entrant stays out and the game ends. Payoffs are zero to the entrant and three to the incumbent. Now suppose that the entrant plays stay out and the incumbent plays fight. The induced path of play is that the entrant stays out and the game ends. Payoffs are zero to the entrant and three to the incumbent. Suppose the entrant plays enter and the incumbent plays coexist. The induced path of play is that the entrant enters, the incumbent coexists, and the game ends. Payoffs are two to the entrant and two to the incumbent. Finally, suppose the entrant plays enter and the incumbent plays fight. The induced path of play is that the entrant enters, the incumbent fights, and the game ends. Payoffs are minus one to the entrant and one to the incumbent. Now that we've filled out our matrix, underline best responses to see that there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria, enter, coexist, and stay out, fight. What should the entrant do? In a true static game, we would have the old static game with multiple Nash equilibria, what should we do conundrum. The players do not have a common preferred Nash equilibrium. Maybe the incumbent should threaten the entrant with a fight to help everyone select a Nash equilibrium. However, play this game with someone, or check out the class video, and you will see that there is no equilibrium selection problem. The entrant will enter confidently, and the incumbent will coexist without hesitation. Selton's paradox is to understand why one Nash equilibrium is so much more sensible than the other. What went wrong with our other Nash equilibrium, the one in which the entrant stays out and the incumbent fights? Here it is in red so we can take a closer look. It's a Nash equilibrium, but the incumbent cannot credibly threaten to fight due to the dynamic nature of the game. If the entrant enters, the incumbent will inevitably back down from the fight because after the entrant enters, it is in the incumbent's own interest to coexist with the entrant. Another way we explain this phenomenon is that in the Nash equilibrium shown, the incumbent is choosing an irrational action off of the path of play. Now take a moment to think back to dynamic battle of the sexes, in which we considered two strategy pairs and said one of these was seen as more plausible, despite their inducing the same path of play. In both strategy pairs, the man selected boxing. In one of the strategy pairs, the woman played boxing no matter what, and in the other she played follow the man. The more plausible strategy pair is that the man plays boxing and the woman plays follow the man, because boxing no matter what includes an irrational action off of the path of play. Thanks so much for watching this video about credibility in dynamic games. In the next video, we'll define subgames, make precise our notion of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, and introduce backwards induction.